I'm live. <laughs> Hello. I, I've got a ring light on. Can you tell it's reflecting in my glasses? Look, don't I look odd? I thought I'll try a ring light. You could see it. Can you see it? Turn it around. Well, look at the ring light. Look at that ring light. That's getting a bit professional, isn't it? But look what it's done to my glasses. Uh, <laughs> it's going off now. <laughs> there. I think I'm better off without the, the ring light, don't you? So, catch up time. Yeah, I've been busy trying to um, f find ways of getting into local schools and getting on into schools online and trying to contact teachers. If you know any teachers, um, I'm really busy doing that. I've had um, a, a couple of interviews as well, which have helped along the way. My latest one was with Lewis this morning and, and he's he's been in a school teaching uh, children in the Bronx in, in New York. So uh, getting some ideas from him as well too. So yeah, um, I think what I wanted to say was, let's have a look. <coughs> of course I've got <coughs> a frog in my throat. That's the usual thing, isn't it? When you come online and start talking to people. Let's see if I've got that central. I think that's okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I've got some yarn here. Look at my latch hook. I just wanted to to say that I've been in school and uh, and I've been teaching in school, and I'm I'm really looking for teachers because if I think if I can teach this to teachers, then they can implement it on in their school on their own, maybe with a couple of volunteers as well. But once the children have started, they teach each other. Now, that is crazy. You think, well, how can children teach each other? And of course, in schools these days, you've got these large screens. And I've got YouTube channels that you can follow that show children if the screen is up there and they're all having a go. And the teacher can put the screen, the video on like and look at things like I'm doing now. And they can pick things up from there to make it so much easier for the teacher to do this in the classroom. So um, I, I had a little girl years ago, about five years ago maybe, could have even been six years ago, teaching them in a library and she said, she said I can do this with my eyes closed. So that's how easy it is and of course unlike knitting there's no drop stitches so it is easy to do. Um, straight away look I've made a chain I think one of the tips I would say to you is that it, it is good if they've got some little holes in the chain it doesn't want to be too tight and uh, one, one of the um, one of the suggestions I do with with young uh, with children is to to get this idea of what what the tension should be like is to say to them try and do it tight and it is possible to do it tight. I've had people say, what do you want? What do you do if you need to do uh, change the tension like you can with knitting? Well, I've just done a few stitches there, look, and you can see how tight they are. So you can actually, once you get going with it, you can do, you can change the tension and make it tiny. There. And the, the way to do that is just to simply Pull it like that and then pull it tight before you actually pull it back over the hook. And that's tight. That's a, But of course, it's no good children starting off making it too tight because then they can't actually hook into it when you need to. Whereas if you've got some loose holes there, you can easily easily hook into those if you need to. Of course, with the, two, with the bridges method, once you get your little bridges, you just hook under the bridges. So that's what I wanted to talk a little bit about is how easy this crochet, latch hook crochet is for children to do in a classroom situation and how easy it is for the teachers. It's easier for the teachers because you now when I was teaching nine, eight and nine year olds, once they've got used to it, we, we don't need lots of help because the children help each other. And the, there's always going to be some in the class who are 
pick it up really quickly and they can help the others. And there's always going to be people, children in the class who struggle a little bit. So they do help each other. It's, it's incredible. It's unlike any other, I don't know, any activity I can think of where children are not expected to, eat, to help each other. But I tell them, I say, you know, ask so and so. They can, she can show you how to do it. And it means that your class soon get used to the idea of helping each other. And it's, it's an activity that the teacher can do with her children, if necessary, with hardly any help, because the children are helping each other. And that's what I wanted to come on today and tell you about, that, that this, this activity is so good for children to learn in the classroom. And of course, once they've learned how to do this stitch, and if, if you haven't seen these videos before, and this is the first one, this is your busy finger, and that's controlling this on the hooks. It's not like ordinary, like, uh, ordinary crochet. It's not traditional at all. It's done with a latch hook, which is totally the opposite. So um, this finger has to control that stitch. And if it doesn't look, this is what happens. It, it goes over the top and, and comes out the way looking. You can't do anything. So that, when you're yarning over, and this is the vocabulary that I use, yarn over, busy finger, control the stick, the loop, the loop on the hook, and then pull it through, keeping it close and bring it back to your busy finger. And your busy finger has to, to hold on to it there until you get used to doing it. And when you, once you're used to doing it, I just, I'm, I'm used to doing it now, and, and, uh, and you just hook it through yarn and pull it through but this finger is still busy you can see a good idea to watch that finger so you can see it's helping okay so there we are we've got a, a chain there's that little bit there which is very very tight I'm just demonstrating that but the next thing they can do is to just no counting involved just measure and hook in and measure and hook in and bring some loops onto the hook. And the, what's happening here is these are little teardrops, you can call them leaves, you can call them teardrops. I like to call them flowers. If you're picking up lots of them, you can easily make a flower, but you need to pick pick a loop up from a, along the hook there. This is probably the hardest part when you first start doing it, but we've missed out that tight chain there, but don't worry about altering it and making it as if there's a smaller bit left at the end just going to the end to finish up and it's a smaller leaf and then you just yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook and then you've got a flower and there's your flower so instead of making rows this can soon be you can soon make some bigger ones put them all on top of each other and then you've got a little brooch or you can carry on um, when you've done your flower and make make a chain again so the flower is on the end of a chain and then if you want you can do about you need to do about 40 40 chains if you want to count them you can say how long does it need to be but you can do about 40 chains and make another flower or you can just play about. There's a loop. I've just made a loop this time without any flower. And then carrying on with that, that's what I call a teardrop shape. So there we go, you can play around with that. You can even hook into some of these, if you want, you can just hook into some of these petals. Hook into a petal, yarn over, see what happens. See what happens if you do a chain in between, you can count as many as you like and then hook into the next one. Look what's happening now, it's spreading the, the petals out a bit. And you've got that bit on the end that we did a few minutes ago. So yeah, you can just keep going and playing about with it and making small chains and bigger chains until you can you make yourself a little latch patch there. So that's what I wanted to come on and do, show you. I'll also show you my, my whip, my work in progress which is, if you might have seen it before, this is the, my lion. It's getting hooked, hooked on my uh, lamp. So yes, he's got two eyes have joined together now. He's there. 
He's got this nice nose and mouth piece. Cheeks, little cheeks and a mouth there. And I'm just crocheting around the top here. And I do, I'm doing that with, uh, if I can find it, I'm doing that with a smaller, a smaller latch hook, this one. So this particular lion is being done with a, a small latch hook. Just to put that stitch there. So I'm going around the top of his art. He's brow now. There. A lot of this has been done with uh, one or two different stitches. Um, because this is my own work rather than something I'm expected to do in school. If I was doing this in school, I would try and keep the chain and slip stitch and make use the bridges, bridges method because we don't need at that level to try and do lots and lots of different stitches. There's the learning bracelet, learning bracelets, and you can do a boolean bracelet and a drops, a, 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 a teardrop bracelet. There's a, all the um, videos are on my channel. You can do the learning bracelets. Uh, but for this sort of thing, um, I'm doing this with the stitches that I already know. And it, and it is possible, if you've been experienced enough, to do some half trebles and some tre some some double crochets as well. And uh, I'm just doing one or two half trebles here and working my way along the top of this. So I'm yarning over first, then I'm hooking in. It's quite... Um, quite uh, um, tight work. It's not um, loose work, isn't this? And uh, because I've got this little sharp hook, I find it quite easy to to find my stitch to hook in. And then I pull up a stitch, and I'm doing a half treble here, yarn over, pull it all through three at once. Now and again, I'll I'll put a chain stitch across the top, just to bring it in level. And then uh, carry on around the top there. And so that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm uh, picking up a back loop because I want the, the, the brown that I'm hooking into, I want that to stay nice and uh, it's almost chain-like in design from the previous row. So you can see that, that sort of chain along here. It's not really a chain, it's the previous row. So uh, that's what I'm doing with my uh, my line at the moment. Going around the top of there. So uh, I am live and we haven't had any visitors. But I'm not worried, it's it's um, during the afternoon. I may, I think I can save this to post schedule it for later. I'm not sure, but we'll see how that goes. And um, yeah, I'm going to make this quite short today and hopefully if you are a teacher, then do get in touch with me and I, I will give you some support and encourage you to, to tackle this with yourself and maybe just one or two of the teachers in the, uh, aides, teachers aides in the classroom and see if you can manage it as a class project. Uh, start with a small group if you're with younger ones and... Uh, and they'll soon be off and do sitting on the floor and doing the chains and and their flowers on their own and and playing with what you've given them to do. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye, and uh, and I'll let you know how I get on with my my lion's face. It's coming on a bit now. Put that down while we uh, switch off, and I say goodbye. Bye for now.